I'm here with Democratic State Representative Abe Jones, representing District 38 of Wake County. Thank you for making time to talk tonight. Um, obviously, we want to talk about the school voucher bill, but I, I think it is important that we talk about the exchange that you had today with one of your colleagues across the aisle. Um, he had questioned, uh, would you have been able to get into Harvard School of Law had you not been a minority or an athlete? We saw your reaction, but I wanted to ask you as we talked here one-on-one, -on -one, what went through your head that exact second? Well, I was uh, taken aback because uh, I didn't expect that question. We were in the question stage uh, or the argument uh, and questions, if you want to ask fellow members questions, about House Bill 823, which calls for uh, vouchers to be supplied to anyone regardless of income bracket, which is a change in the law. And so I was uh, making a statement against that bill, uh, pointing out uh, other factors, and so it caught me off guard because he brought up my educational background. He said, you went to Harvard, and I went to Harvard undergrad and law school, graduated in 74 and 77 respectively. And so I didn't expect a question of that nature. And, and also, I was an athlete. Uh, I ran cross country and track, but that's not how I got there. I got there through scholarship, through, through my academics. And I went out for the team voluntarily. I wasn't recruited, and they didn't know I ran when, they, when I applied. And I, quite honestly, I don't think they did. So I was surprised. So it caught me off guard. So, but I guess once I dwelt, once I thought about it, I thought, well, he's actually, uh, it's, it's, it, it insults me. <laughs> so so I, uh, that surprised me, so I thought I should respond. And you did respond. I think the verbiage that you used was, does anyone else feel like they were shot by that comment? That was the verbiage you used there. Um, when you use the word shot, I, I wager it means you, you felt that. I mean, to have somebody say that to, to question your ability to enter Harvard Law School. Yeah, it caught me off guard because, like you said, I went to the undergrad and the law school, and that's two steps. And when I went to the undergrad from 70 to 74, um, I had uh, applied the normal way. Uh, I don't even know if they knew I was an athlete, to be honest with you. You had to put things down on, on the application. But I was, uh, I was at Enloe High School here in Raleigh. And uh, the guy from Harvard had interviewed kids at Broughton. And he came over to Enloe, he had some time left. And they asked uh, me over to allow me to come to the office because I told my guidance counselor, anyone come through that comes through here offering help to go to college, I want to talk to them. So uh, naturally, I come in and talk to the guy from Harvard. And he pulled the application out and, and handed it to me at the end of the interview. So he said, send that in. That was how I got in. But I got in because I, I was in the National Honor Society. I was a very, very good student at that time, almost had an A average. And that's how I got in, not because I was a runner. <laughs> and here we are in 2023. It was your merit that got you in, your ability Absolutely. to Absolutely. get into that. Academic. And yet here we are, someone questioning, do you think you would have gotten in? When you hear that, and I, I wager that's not the only time you've heard that either about you or someone else, when do you think the point will come where people who are minorities or people who uh, you know enter into these programs will no longer have to hear that because that's hurtful to hear it it is hurtful yes and and i i don't know when it will come uh, uh, i i i hope it'll be in my lifetime i have two daughters 129 137 they're both very smart young women who are college graduates and done very well in their respective fields and I hope certainly in their lifetime you, it'll go away. But I don't know. I'm 71 years old. I don't know if it'll go away in my lifetime. But uh, we'll see. <laughs> you know, to get things accomplished uh, in any um, sector of government, working together is critical. And I, I, I wonder, do you believe that you can effectively continue to work alongside your colleague, uh, Representative Jeffrey McNeely, after the comments that were made? Yes, I do. Uh, he came to me. He apologized actually on the floor. And I don't know if someone talked to him or someone did not or whatever, but he, he apologized to me on the floor after some time. He, he got up to speak on the bill, the bill uh, about the vouchers, and he, he said, I just want to offer my apologies to Representative Jones, uh, so forth. And I accepted his apology, so I, I did and I do. However, that doesn't 
forgive the, the, merit, the, the import of the statement, which was basically you went to Harvard as an athlete, and that's why you got in, because you uh, athleticism and your race. I and mean, you can't help but avoid that, uh, but get that, uh, get that meaning. And in, 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 in due respect to Robert Reeves, our minority, he, he's the one who intervened initi initially for me and said that was you know, basically spoke to that, that incident. And then uh, later, Ms. McNeely apologized. And do you think this is a teachable moment, not just for him, but for anyone else who, who uh, feels that such a comment is appropriate? I think it is. I hope, hope we will learn from that. I think, you know, I've, I've, in all honesty, I've been treated fairly by my Republican colleagues. Uh, I would say six, seven, eight of them came to me privately while we were still in session, apologized for the incident. And they didn't have to do that. They came to me privately and spoke to me. Uh, I, I'd say at least half dozen to eight. I didn't count, but I know it was over a half dozen and said, Abe, I'm so sorry that happened. Uh, so forth. And there was a moment where you stood up and you clarified, you said, I went to Harvard and they, the way it works is they rank students by one, two, three, four, five, and you graduated rank two. So that means you yes. said, I earned it. And they stood up and they applauded you. Yes. To have that support from your peers, what did that feel like? Felt really good. Felt really good. Felt good. I, I knew that people agree with me in the chamber. They were embarrassed by Mr. McNeely's, the import of his remarks. And like I say, he did apologize. And uh, I accept it, and I, but I, it's, sorry we, it's, it's sad that we live in an environment where people would go to that instead of just taking it at face value that you went to a great school, it's a great school academically, and you earned your way, and you earned your way here. I was elected like everybody else to represent my constituents. So it sounds like you were content with his apology. You think you can just move forward now? And yes, absolutely. Put that behind you? I can, I can move forward, yes. Now, the main reason why you were talking today, why you were all gathered there, was because of the school voucher uh, bill. Um, talk to me a little bit about the progress that was made, because I believe you said it was passed. It was passed. I disagree with it strongly because uh, it, it, it simply offers money to anyone to take public tax dollars and apply it to a private school education. And my position is that the, the public schools need support. They are very good schools. Uh, and that the education you get there is quality. So no one needs any help to go to a private school in lieu of going to a public school and take the public money with them. If you want to go to public school, I mean to private school, then go ahead and go, but pay for it and leave the public schools to the large numbers of the population that are going to need good solid public schools like we have here in Wake County and many other counties. We have very solid uh, public school education. And so private school education, if you want it, elect it, go up, pay for it, and, and that's great. And our, uh, our education reporter, Emily Walkenhorst, has been following this as well, and she was talking about how much money is going to be uh, taken away from public schools if this is actually going towards private. I think millions of dollars, I think it's yes. almost 200 million, oh, yes, I, in I, Wake I, County, if I'm uh, mistaken. In or? the uh, biennium we're in now, uh, I believe they call for $87 million to be spent, and then in the next biennium, which would be 24-25, this is 23-24, uh, 24-25 would be $163 million. It, it sounds like just from hearing you, that's, that's egregious. It should not yeah, be the case. That's, that's what I was speaking out against, that it's unnecessary. Private schools have been around a long time. I mean, Harvard's a private school, but they don't, they don't have their hands out to the public treasury for, <laughs> to pump money into them. And and same should be true with anyone who wants to go to a, a secondary, I mean a uh, K through 12 school. If you want to go to a K through 12, to a K through 12 school, then go ahead, but pay for it and leave the public schools for for everybody because it's one of the greatest things that we have in our society to lift everyone to a different status. Doesn't matter who your parents were or what they make. They could be poor as Joe Sirkahan. Or, or rich, you can go to public school and go to get a great education in North Carolina. But we are ranked now 50th in funding and I think 48th in, in attempts to fund. And that's sad and we need to raise that. And, we, and that's what I was speaking to. This bill, we don't want to siphon off money from the treasurer. We want to, to support our public schools and not give money to people who send their kids to private schools. And now that it's passed um, in your sector, what's the next step? Is it going to the Senate and then the governor's desk? Or? I think it goes from here to 
the gov it was a veto override vote. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. So so now it's overridden, and so I guess it becomes law, and off we go, marching away. But uh, I, I'm, I'm saddened by it, and I think it's something that we're going to have to campaign on in 2024 to retard and change it. Lastly, what do you think the fallout effect is going to be of that? I, I think if it stays intact, it's going to damage our public schools, you know, because we're going to keep cycling money. It hasn't reached that crisis point yet, but if we keep the pace up the way it's going right now, it can happen. And there are people who have given up on the public schools, even though I would dare say everybody in that legislature probably went to public schools. So if we can do it then, why can't we do it now? It being give public edu good public education, and we do. So why should we siphon off money for you to go to a private school? I would name, but I'm not going to name any. But there's some very good private schools, but pay for it. And just like when I went to Harvard, it's a private school, college level, but uh, I and my family and my scholarship money paid for it. So that's how you do it. But you don't go get into public, the uh, public tax money to pay for private education. And obviously this is something we're going to watch very closely to see what the effects will be um, after it is made law. So uh, State Representative Abe Jones, thank you so much for making time. I know this has been a tough day for you. You said it was interesting was the word you used, but yeah. um, hopefully someone can watch this interview and uh, take away something uh, of value from it. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, glad to have been here. Thanks for having me.